Oh man, why the last man? This is one I was actually super excited to talk about because man oh man, this is the little show that never could, isn't it? This has probably had one of the roughest spouts of production hell out of any modern television production. This was in the works. This show has been in the works in, in some form. It was a movie for a bit. It's a television show. This series has been in the works since 2009. It has been pushed around a lot. It has lost directors and showrunners and lead actors out the wazoo. And surprisingly to, I think, the surprise literally of everybody, Why the Last Man finally, the show that was struggling to get out there to find its audience, finally had a home. FX picked it up, it was released on Hulu I believe as well, 10 episodes came out for one season, and about halfway through the first season of Why the Last Man, the show was cancelled. FX announced that they're not moving forward with a second season, though the showrunner is hopeful they can find a new home for it elsewhere. We can get into that for some aspect of stuff, there could be the play of that because Why the Last Man is technically part of the DC umbrella, it could be finding a new home at Warner Brothers. Potentially, if that were the case, I think we would have heard about something by now. As it stands, Why the Last Man is done. This show that has been struggling to get its voice heard for over a decade came and went with a whimper and man, is it kind of depressing. You know, I like the comic book Why the Last Man. I'll, I'll be the first to admit I never finished it. It's just one of those ones that there's just all this other stuff coming out that I just wanted to read more so than that, so I've read the first few volumes, and I was never able to go back and get into it. And now I think I might, because I'm genuinely curious about this world and what this was created to be. So the show comes out, I'm excited, and from the first episode, I was like, okay, I get what they're doing here. They're making this something adaptable to television. Right away, it's not like the comic book that much. It is very toned down because it's a comic book. We can take more liberties and do the more adult storylines. They do adult storylines here. I should say that, but it's more mature, a little more graphic. But because it's television, we have to appeal to a master audience. So we can't take as big of liberties as we did in the comic book. But I think that first episode, which is the entire event of the episode, was like the day before every man on earth was killed. That episode, it sells you on its premise. It's like we are building up the world that these women are living in. You love them or you hate them. They are struggling in their own ways and it's kind of interesting to see that. And then it just kind of like does the big thing where all the men go. And after that moment, it just takes a lot of turns that would work in the comic book because I think it could be explored better that way. And it never comes across perfect. So... I think a big thing for me with why this just didn't stick the landing was how simplistic the cinematography looked. You have the opportunity to explore a post-apocalyptic world, but everything is just so brightly lit. It is just so standardized television where it looks like it could be from a soap opera. Everything just looks bland and not in bland like The Walking Dead per se. I'm not comparing the two. But there's a certain stylistic choice to The Walking Dead that works for that book and that show. And there's a style to the Why Last Man comic book, but in the show, everything just looks perfect. It, there's just no grit to it. There's no dirt to it. Everything just looks perfectly fine. And then when you have that being the case, it doesn't feel like it knows the tone it's going for. So it wants to be this hard-edged political thriller, this intense post-apocalyptic setting but it just doesn't lean into those elements strong enough to actually do anything with them. And that kind of sucks because there's some good stuff in here. There's a great conflict with Diane Lane's character struggling to be the new president of the United States and having like a coup within that and how kind of like the Republican and the Democratic parties are fighting against each other. That could be a really fun thing to explore, especially in this new setting when we're just saying it's not just the men who are assholes. You know, whatever side of the political spectrum you fall on in that regard, it's not just the men who are this type of political person. It's women too. And I think that's something fun to explore. But then it doesn't do anything with that. It just touches it on the surface where it's just like, yeah, 
This person is being billed as the bad guy because they are Republican. Meanwhile, these people who are the Democratic Party are being viewed as the good guys. Instead of exploring any gray areas or anything with that, it just sticks to, here's the person we are supposed to hate, here's the person we're supposed to like. It doesn't play if the concept's strong enough and doesn't add anything to that entire idea, which kind of sucks because... I think the political side of a world like this would make for good television, especially if that's what you want this to be. When you mix the political side of the hardcore action escaping stuff, it doesn't blend perfectly because then you have too many characters focused on over here who aren't getting their time to do anything interesting, and it takes away from what could be the compelling storyline with Agent 355 and Yurik. And by the way, I've said it since pretty much the announcement of this show, I think casting Yurik is going to be the most important role on the show because you have to find the right balance of I'm competent and not a dumbass and I don't want to be a part of this. Now I'm not going to make a big comparison from the, the versions of Yurik on screen and on paper. They're different in their own ways, but the actor playing Yurik here, it's not the best. And I, I think the problem is he kind of exudes a certain type of masculinity that doesn't convey all of masculinity. Yurik should be the everyman. Yurik should be kind of like, he's silly, he's not the brightest, he can't get his life together. Sure, that's there. But he doesn't convey this type of machismo that I think needs to compel the male audience. And I don't like, you know, diversifying the audience like that and putting them into categories, but... As far as representing, I think, the male side of things in this world, Yurik doesn't capture, I think, what an idealistic audience would want to see for the male character. He's too pretty boy. He is too confident. I don't want to say confident, actually. He is just too submissive to the world around him. He is not tough. He is anxious. And that is not really what a character in this world would be. If there was actually a man in this situation, I'm sure they'd be scared, but they'd also have a little bit more of toughness and arrogance to them, and that is not something we see Yurik being seen here. Again, I think Yurik in the comic books is different in a better way, but there's just something about this that just doesn't work perfectly for the character of Yurik in this show. I think the standout, honestly, is Agent 355 because she's trying to do something. She's commanding, she's tough, she's actually just like, I'm doing something here. Stop being an idiot and focus on the situation. We're going to get out of here and you're the most important asset in the world. I'm going to make sure you don't die. And she actually does a good job of like portraying all those powerful emotions into one thing, giving her the most nuance out of anybody on the show, which is kind of interesting. Honestly, it's kind of interesting. There's another side character in here, of course, Madam President and Yurik, they have another person in their family. Hero's in here, Yurik's sister, and her storyline, I think, just felt like the one that dragged on. I Just because that could be a good story to put in there. It really could. But it just kind of took away from, like, the emotional beats of other stories, and it didn't, like, really do that good. I think another big problem I had with this show was the pacing was all over the place. I'll give credit to The Walking Dead for one thing. They really knew how to pace their show in the beginning where we are slowly and slowly building our world. This one said, no, episode six, here's like a hundred different factions. That's an overstatement. But here's like six different factions, all vying for this one thing. Here's the political coups going on. Here's all this stuff that we're just pushing into here so you understand the world we're building as opposed to learning the world we're invested in it's just like it's there you deal with it now as opposed to letting us grow with it and care for it it was just something that was pushed into it and it doesn't pace well with the show we meet a bunch of different factions which kind of sucks and they none of them really do much of anything of interest which is kind of depressing to say because this show done right could be the handmaid's tale it could be on that level and the fact that I don't think it did anything with its structure or its narrative or its stylistic choices just shows you maybe somebody was just wanting to get this out so they could move on with their life. Maybe somebody said, let's make it, we're done, give it back to Warner Brothers and HBO because we don't want to be a part of this anymore, having like these weird factions, it's like all over the place. I don't know. 
And that kind of sucks because instead of giving us something that could have been special and dark and full of this interesting plot, we just got a standardized cookie cutter version of what could be a compelling narrative about women taking over the, the world, like inheriting this earth. The thing they never had, they could suddenly have. And the most important person alive happens to be the squeamish submissive man who realizes I have to man up or the world's gonna fall apart. Instead, we didn't get any of those. Now, one thing I will give the show credit for, which I think is kind of important, is it did manage to deal with this, uh, how am I gonna tread this ground? It does deal with gender identity in a very compelling way. So, it biologically, this show is presenting the idea that women who have transitioned to men and are taking testosterone, they are still biologically women. And that plays, a con plays an issue in the world as how do you feel as your identity, how does the world view you when you have wanted to be a man your whole life and now the world's literally telling you you're a woman. I don't really want to get too deep into that. I think it handles it in a way that is mature. It doesn't turn it into a joke or a burden. It's just like, this is the situation. Our, our one character who really plays a factor is Sam, who is this woman who has transitioned to a man. He is kind of just our gateway into that world, for, for lack of a better term. He is the focus of that. And you could see him being tired of answering the questions, which I understand to be the case for a person in that situation. And it just does an okay job presenting those, but it never does it in a negative connotation where it feels like it's making fun of or like taking a personal stance like, like, no, if you transition, you're not actually this person. It's just more like you can't change your biology on that kind of scale. And that's interesting to explore. Now, I'm not going to say my thoughts or opinions on any of that because I don't think it matched to this review, but it's just something that is interesting to explore and it does a good job at doing that. Now, is it perfect? No, and nothing about the show is perfect. It's just pretty much like, a good choice to deal with and you could, I think the idea of like exploring gender identity and roles of a woman in this in this world is pretty interesting I gotta say that was something that was impressive and interesting but the rest of it sadly it just missed the mark this could have been special but I think there's too many things stacked against it to work and as much as you have Diane Lane doing her best to be the, the most chill woman in the world you just can't catch that magic you know, I think the comic book, it's adaptable and it can be adapted right, but this did not adapt to the right parts of the comic. Sadly, Why the Last Man, I don't think it's going to be getting a second season. If it does, it won't be with FX, it might be with HBO, but I don't imagine the numbers are great. <laughs> so, yeah, sucks to say, but another comic book property officially bites the dust in live action. Between this and Jupiter's legacy, it's becoming more and more bleak for any independent works, and God help us all if Marvel and DC reign supreme. <sighs> why, why is DC? It's Vertigo, but you know what I mean. So, Why the Last Man, season one of one, potentially, I'm going to give a six out of ten. Now, thank you guys for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.